Hey future gaijins! I can't wait to welcome you to Japan. However, before you pack your bags and head on that plane, my friends and I have seven things we would love to share with you before you make that move to Japan. First up is my amazing friend Lara, who has some insights to share with you about teaching in Japan. Here's what she has to say. Okay, so one thing that I think that should be noted about uh, coming to Japan to teach is that, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, the experience is what you make of it and how, you know, you, you need to recognize that uh, how you react is very important. But um, it can be very fun and it can be very rewarding, but it can also be very tedious if it's too easy, which sometimes it is. And uh, one thing that uh, I wish people had told me is that uh, Japanese children t can be horrible. Elementary school, middle school, some high school kids, absolute monsters. Absolute monsters. <laughs> so thank you, Laura. As she said, teaching in Japan can be a challenge, especially when you're teaching to a different culture outside of your own. Not to mention, guys, that after a while, teaching becomes very routine and you might begin to feel like, oh, where's my life going? This is so stagnant because it's the same thing day in, day out. So make sure that you try to do very different things. Ensure that you get part-time jobs where you get to teach adults, junior high schools, high school, elementary, just to mix things up a little. So mix things up a little so that it adds more value to your experience. If you want to hear more from Lara and learn how she made the transition from the classroom to a Japanese firm, link her up on her YouTube page. You can find the information in the about section under this video. And if you want to change your career entirely, there are tons of opportunities for you to do so in Japan. However, you might need to learn a little Japanese. Here's what my talented and future entrepreneurial extraordinaire, Chris, has to say on this point. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm going to give you three things to consider or three tips if you're coming to live in Japan as a teacher. Uh, first thing is you don't need Japanese. Uh, you don't need to speak Japanese to survive in Japan. But if you want to thrive in Japan, it's good to speak Japanese. One of the things that may attract you to living and working in Japan is the money, money, money. However, there are some things that you also have to consider when you are thinking about the salary. And here's my girl, my amazing and adorable Whitney. Hi, I'm Whitney and I've been living in Japan for almost three years now and teaching English for all of that time. Um, when I think about considering to come here, one thing that I would tell anyone who's about to move is that Think about the gross salary that you're being offered, but also bear in mind that there are a lot of, um, not necessarily deductions from your employer, but that you will just have to pay out. So your disposable income is not as high as it looks after you, your employer take out the deduction. So you have to think about things like city tax and health insurance, and those things vary from city to city. So if you're coming to Japan to be able to pay off your student loans, or to send money back to your dependents, ensure you find out about the taxes you have to pay and get information about the city that you're gonna live in. Okay, don't forget that because coming to Japan is a big move and it's a life-changing experience, okay? So now, now listen to what my very candid friend Katie has to say. Hi guys, um, one of the things I really think um, or I wish I had known on coming to Japan um, was how isolated everything would be. Um, I didn't know how lonely I would feel, how out of place I would feel and I wish I had prepared mentally for that. So if someone had told me it would have been that diff difficult, I would have been more prepared, I guess. 
packing your bags, leaving everything that is familiar, that is home to you, is a really big deal. So if you are being recruited by a company, or if you have made a decision on your own to come to Japan and you don't know anyone, you need to find out more about the city you are going to be placed in, you're going to be living in, you're going to be working in. And Whitney has some additional advice and things to consider on this point. So in my experience when I was moving here, they told me that I was moving in an area called Kyushu. And I didn't know much about Japan. I didn't know Kyushu was such a vast area. It's, Kyushu is like, would be equivalent to a state in America. Like it has lots of cities in it and then it's break, broken down in lots of towns. Um, and I wish I knew um, more about that area so that I could gauge my mental space. I thought I was gonna live in an urban city, but when I got here, it was like a deep rural countryside area. Um, I knew no one, I felt so alone, I mean, other than the fact that I didn't speak Japanese and everyone in my town was Japanese, like it was just a very strange place for me to be in. Yes, it's no joke. If you are black, like I am, you can be placed in a very rural area where you're the only black person in that community and they're just eyes staring at you and it is lonely and secluded especially if you are living in an era where there's a lot of snow and you have to stay indoor almost all the time ah that's a really big deal so find out more about the era that you are going to be living in however if you can there's one way that you can feel more at home and chris has just the thing for you find your network find your people <laughs> and use that so you can you can get the things that you need next thing is stay in touch with people from home and stay in touch with people that you meet here because it gets lonely and people don't get a chance to uh, meet up and just hang out and be together all the time we can't say it anymore. Being in Japan can be lonely. After all, you're away from home, you're away from what is familiar. If you want to link any of the persons in this video, Whitney, she has a channel that she does with a couple of friends called Black Women Explore Japan. The link to that channel is here. They have some an amazing stuff, guys. So go and check it out. If you want to touch base with Chris and see all the amazing things that he's doing, my gosh, he has what's called Sunday Brunch. It's amazing. You can check out his Instagram page, everything Chris, or you can link him up on Facebook as well. The links to his contacts are also attached to the about section of this video. As well as for my very darling Kadia, if you want to make friends with Kadia, go and check out her Instagram page as well. We are a community. Start from now building your community of love and support. So that's all for this video, Living Kaishin. Don't forget, leave me a comment, like, subscribe, and share four things. Thank you. Sayonara.